when I was uh, in grammar school, <laughs> the name of the school that I went to was St. Cyril of Alexandria. So, of course, I grew up thinking that St. Cyril must have been a great, you know, wonderful person. Uh, and then I ended up discovering many years later, uh, especially watching this movie and researching it to see how accurate it might have been, uh, that in fact St. Cyril was the, the leader of the Christians when they took over Alexandria and burnt the library. It was burnt twice, once by the Romans, but that was later. No, 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 sorry, that was earlier because that was when Cleopatra was there. That was part of the battle. But the second time it was burnt by the Christians or destroyed by the Christians. Because um, you only need one book. Why have all those books? <laughs> so, um, and, and Hypatia has, I've, I've read, people consider her to have been, have been the smartest woman that ever lived. Ever? Clearly can't be true because you're smarter, right? Oh, yeah. Lots of you are, lots of you guys are smarter. Of course, we have a stable genius, you know. Well, but he's not female, but you know what I mean. You know, that's a kind of crazy you know, thing to say. How do, you, how do you ever figure that out? In any case, though, uh, she was a, uh, a pagan. Uh, and she was a, uh, a person who was uh, teaching science and math and things of that sort. Uh, her father was the uh, Greek translator um, who translated uh, um, or, or kept alive uh, the book uh, by Ptolemy. No, 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 it wasn't. It was the Elements by Euclid. That's what he kept kept in circulation, um, the elements. Um, so very interesting, important family, and yet um, the mob uh, skinned her alive with clamshells and left her lying in the sun to die. Is there a symbolism to the clamshells, or were they just like, this is the best option? Alexandria is on the beach. Okay. Nearby and sharp. Nearby and sharp, I guess. Um, but that's such a horrific, horrific, uh, you know, thinking you know, that they don't do that in the movie. They, the the servant who loves her tries to save her from worse by strangling her to death in the book. Oh, I shouldn't tell you. That's a what's that called? Spoiler. Spoiler. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a bit, I think it's, it used to be online for free, so I don't know, you know how all that stuff is topsy and turvy right now, which is interesting. In any case, I was horrified to find out that St. Cyril was that kind of guy, and not the kind of guy that, that made him, you know, the white statue, you know, that was just blessing everybody in my, my grammar school. So that was kind of horrible to discover. Um, but that movie was also made at about the time when Al-Qaeda was causing a slight disturbance in the force, uh, if you recall, and, uh, and George Bush W. was involved in, uh, no, actually, I think the first one, it was the first one, that his father was uh, creating the, the uh, Persian Gulf response to Saddam Hussein. But in any case, the, the uh, no, it might have been later, I forget. But in any case, it was like very political because everyone's complaining about the Islamic terrorists. And the movie basically presents, well, you know what? At one time, it was the Christians who were the terrorists doing almost the same kind of thing. You know, so, so and, and it was a European movie, you know, and so you can tell hmm, there's some politics involved in presenting uh, of the Christians this way. But in any case, the Christians do take over uh, the empire, as you know, I asked the quiz question, you know, how, how did the Christians take over? Lots of interesting responses. Of course, the, 
the orthodox uh, answer to that is, well, because it's God's religion and, and you know, of course. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and I mentioned that the um, uh, Constantine the Great uh, wanted peace in his kingdom and decided instead of having, they actually were already having warfare between different Christian sects, the Arians versus uh, the followers of Arius uh, and Athanasius. And so he called them the bishops all to a council in Nicaea in 325, and the end result uh, was uh, uh, the Creed of Nicaea. the concluding creed, and creed uh, is Latin for credo. Notice this also gives the, uh, the Greek, so the Nicene Council was actually in Greek. All the, all the people there were speaking Greek, it wasn't Latin. But when we're, we're looking at this particular page, they're giving us, and we, we call them the creeds, and that means credo, that's the, the Latin for I believe which is the first word of the, the prayer or the oath, or whatever you want to call this. Uh, call it a creed. And, and so this is the conclusion of the Council of Nicaea, translated into English, of course, and so you can have issues with that. Um, uh, we believe in one God. Now, now watch how this works, though, because we've got the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, right? The only begotten of the Father, of the substance of the Father, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. And by the way, that, that whole phrase comes from the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So that's a phrase that continues, right? You know, that's a historically uh, uh, prominent phrase. Um, begotten, so so Jesus was begotten, not made, being of one substance. And notice they put homoousian, right? Remember, I, I, I said how the, the argument between the Arians versus uh, Athanasius was over uh, was it one substance or kind of like two substances. In other words, were they separate? And so the, the difference is homo, homo useus and homo e useus, which by the way is where we get the, the phrase, there was not one iota of difference. Right, you've heard that expression ever? Yes, because uh, that was the difference between the two sides is one iota, putting that iota in the middle. Uh, kind of changed this to hom homo e usian, right? Which which would have been different. Um, and so so there's a big theological debate over that um, with the Father, by whom all things were made, both. Well, that doesn't look right. Both which be in heaven and in earth. Notice I should have mentioned too up here. Remember, this is the visible and the invisible, which indicates it's a platonic creed, right? Plato believed there was the visible world, this one, and the invisible world. Remember, you better go into the, the cave uh, to recognize that, you know, the real is outside of this phenomena that we see, right? Um, so that's, that's a platonic, it's not Aristotelian. Uh, an Aristotelian creed would have not even made this distinction because everything must be visible or else it doesn't exist, right? Um, and uh, so for us men and for our salvation, Jesus, right, came down from heaven and was incarnate, made meat, right? What, what's another word for that? 
made flesh. You could say made flesh, right? Um, uh, and was made man. He suffered, and the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. And he shall come again to judge both the quick and the dead. And we believe in the Holy Ghost. So this is the third one, right? Remember, it starts off, we believe in one God. But now you've got three, right? Um, uh, and we believe in the Holy Ghost. And whosoever shall say that there was a time when the Son of God was not. So don't, don't go around thinking that just because Jesus came into the world you know, at a particular birth, etc. Um, that doesn't mean that he wasn't there for all time. So how do you how do you account for that? Um, before he was begotten, he was not, or that he was made of things that were not, or that he is of a different substance or essence from the Father, or that he is a creature or subject to change or conversion. All that, so say, the Catholic and apost apostolic church if they say that you're anathematized, that means you're a heretic, kicked out, etc. Um, notice there's lots of different creeds. I thought it was pretty neat uh, how some of them are, are counted. Um, I mean, these are just uh, some of the main ones. The earlier one, Apostles' Creed, Creed of Nicaea, uh, uh, the Constantinople Creed, Amended at the, the next council, I guess. Chalcedonian, Athanasian, uh, creeds of the early church, uh, interdenominational creeds, um, statement of 1943. Right, you get the idea. This is, you know, if you're going to have a religion, well, you need your statement of faith and what, what the creeds are. Anglican churches, assemblies of God, etc. You get the idea? Yes? There's lots of them. They're all slightly different, right? And you know, something was an issue and, and it was resolved by all everybody all voting and saying, okay, so we, yeah, we're going to say homo lucius, not homo e lucius, right? And that's how, how a lot of that uh, gets solved. We still have uh, councils. Um, I remember uh, councils, um, even as a, as a kid, um, there was a big one uh, uh, that changed the mass in the United States. When I was a kid, the Mass, the Roman Catholic Mass, was said in Latin. So we had our, our missal, which had the Latin on the one side and the English on the other. Because as a kid, you know, you're learning uh, uh, Gloria in Excelsis Deo, and I could never figure out why eggshells were so important. Anybody have that experience? was sent above me. In any case, not, thou shalt not make fun of the, you know, no. That's it. Okay, so um, why bring this up? Um, we're moving on to uh, St. Augustine. And St. Augustine is, um, how, how do you present him? My goodness, let me get rid of this here. Um, and, and mention uh, reading. You know what? What should we read? I mean, that's a fascinating question that you guys brought up uh, the other day. Um, was it Summer that brought it up? I don't see Summer here today. Uh, but or Sophia, one of, someone brought it up, and they're not here today. But I'll, I'll still talk about this because uh, I still haven't figured out what to suggest. I mean, it's so overwhelming today, uh, what you can do. Um, all this is online for free, you know, so if you want to uh, um, uh, read all of the works of the early church fathers in translation or in their original, if we, if we even have that, like, gosh, it's there for free for you to spend a lifetime basically doing that. I don't know what would be the point of doing that. Uh, if you're interested in finding how deep this tradition goes and how many different individuals are arguing over different aspects of it, um, and so on. Um, but if you go and you look, uh, 
at just St. Augustine. So here's, here's the philosopher that we're looking at today. And what should I suggest that you read? My goodness, uh, everything he wrote that we, we found, um, they, they might still be finding other stuff out there, but you have, you have it. Uh, the City of God uh, on the Holy Trinity, the anti-Manichaean writings. Why, why is that important? Let me, let me uh, uh, talk a little bit about his life. Uh, so, he's uh, probably a Berber, um, if you're familiar with the people in North Africa. Uh, his mother, at least, they believe was a Berber, not sure about his father. Um, but they lived in Hippo, actually he's the Bishop of Hippo, but he's not a, originally from that town, that was one of the main towns in the area. But, um, so 